Thanks for joining me today as we create these gorgeous cards using some dies. We're going to have a great time. Thanks for joining me on this fantastic journey, including card crafting. In order to make these beautiful cards, I took out all of my nesting type dies and I have a whole bunch of card bases that we can use with them. And nesting dies are perfect for this or if you have any dies that are shapes, we're going to cut out the centers of our card bases. So I'm going to set a bunch of these aside and pick out my favorite. And this is my favorite nesting die. I just think it's a beautiful shape and it looks good on any card I've ever used it on. So I'm going to find one that gives me enough space to have a few more things going on on my card, but that looks like a beautiful size. So we're going to use some removable tape just to make sure that doesn't move when I die cut it out. And I just want to make sure that's nice and centered. So I'm just centering it on my mat here that has some grid lines on it so that I can make sure it's kind of where I expect it to go. Sometimes when I eyeball it, it's not perfect. And you'll see when I cut it out, it's still, still not quite perfect. It's good enough for this card. So I'm going to set aside that inside and we're going to just work with our card base today. I am going to use my bone folder just to make a nice crisp line. I'm going to put something on the inside and I decided to go with this beautiful gold and white pattern paper. And you can do multiple things when you have a cutout in your card base. You can put stuff on the inside of the card or you can do like I'm doing and put a piece of pattern paper. You can create your own paper that goes behind it. There's lots of things you can do with these and I just love using my nesting dies for things like this because I think it just gives a little bit of interest in a card when you've got this little cutout and it allows you to put some different dimension. This is some foam tape so that we can give this a little bit more dimension so you could see that there's actually a cutout and then the pattern paper will be behind it. And in order to make sure it doesn't fold, I like to put my pattern paper kind of in and then fold it over. And so there you go, that's a pretty look and I love that gold paper behind it. Just a quick note, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Back to our regularly scheduled program. All right, I took out a blue silicone mat just so everything kind of stays where I need it. And I took out anything that had gold in it. So I pulled out my washi, I pulled out some stickers, and I'm just going to have a little play around to see what I want to do. I really, really like these butterflies and I was hoping to like them enough to use it on this project, but we'll use it in something else. So I'm going to pull out these die cuts and these are pre-cut out. These are somewhat large, but I thought I might be able to find something that would just go along the cutout here. I encourage you to pull out your stuff, right? Because otherwise we just don't use it. All right, so I found these pretty sunflowers and because there's a sunflower in the pattern paper, I thought that would be really pretty. And then I could use some of this just gold foliage as well. So what do you think? I think those are really, really pretty. And then I can make them cover over that center cutout, but then also cut off the remainders on the outside of the card. And then I just happen to have a happy birthday. It's in a glitter gold color, so it'll all be a white and gold card. As you know, I don't really plan my cards out. To begin with, I plan an idea like in this case the cutouts. I really don't plan out the colors or the papers that I'm going to use. That makes it a little fun and it also allows you to see a little of the thought process that goes behind creating cards because I think that can be the hardest part is sometimes just trying to figure out how you're going to make everything work and where to get started. So sometimes it's just pulling out your stuff <laughs> to make it a day of using your nesting dies for cutouts in your cards. So I seem to like this. I do decide that I think there's not enough definition between the cutout and that white paper. So I'm going to use the initial centerpiece and I'm going to put that in there just so I don't get any on the pattern paper. And I'm going to just outline that cutout with a gold pen. And I decided to put just a little bit of removable tape on the back of that so that it stays where I want it. Again, just trying not to get any on the inside of my card. And so I'm just going to quickly go around this. And that just gives a little bit more definition, makes it stand out a little bit more. I think it was getting lost a little bit when I decided to add all that gold dyes. It was going to start to get lost. So that just adds a little bit something more. I could have always done a border by using the next size up in my nesting dies, but didn't plan it ahead. <laughs> 
as usual, this is what I went with. And I think it just gives it a little bit more definition. You definitely know there's a cutout now. So I'm going to use my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue to put a little glue on the back of these gold pieces. And then we'll just adhere those. I could have used some foam tape or something along those lines. There's enough definition already with that piece being popped out and those sunflowers have little teeny tiny holes in the center of it so I'm just going to use a rag to wipe that off so that I don't get that all over my hands which I've already partially done and then I'm going to attach that other one as well and then I'm going to figure out where I want to put this happy birthday and also use a little bit of glue on that this happy birthday is already has some dimension to it so it will look pretty right there in that corner I liked it best there. Gives it a lot of glitter and then we'll put some of this foliage in the other two corners. And I like it to kind of overlap that opening. Just seems to be a fun look when it overlaps just a little bit. So we'll press that down and then we'll cut off the overlapping edges later on and then we'll put this smaller piece right there above the happy birthday. And that was a super easy card. Again, I cheated a little bit and used some pattern paper for the inside, but I have it. Also would make this video go a little bit faster because I do have four cards that I want to make today. And so I'm always under the gun for keeping this short enough because you guys are all very busy. And so we don't have tons and tons of time to watch card making videos, but I hopefully you'll find that this one, because it's four cards, is going to give you some great ideas on how to use some of your nesting dots. That is my hope here today and I like to keep my cards fairly simple so that anyone can do them. I think that came out really elegant. I like that quite a bit and then of course I'm going to need to do something on the inside. So I'm just using these longer dies that were already pre-cut out and I'm just going to put one in the right corner there and then I'll put the other one on the other side. And so everything's just glued down. So it's got that little bit of dimension, but I don't think it'll be too much for me to have to send it special through the mail. But I think it's a very pretty, elegant card. And I decided to make them both symmetrical in a lot of ways by just making them straight up and down. You'll see throughout this video, I do cut out parts of things that you guys already know how to put glue on and things like that. So I do cut some of that out just to keep this video as reasonably timed as, as possible. All right, just a little bit of glue there. Okay, on to the next card. Uh, so I decided to use my infinity dies, the circles. I am, instead of just using one, I might go with two, a small one and then an even smaller one. And then you'll see I go back in to try and find the two coordinating dies so I can make a little bit of a border. Just in case I decide I want a border on these, it's nice to be able to have those already pulled out so I don't have to pull them out later. And that's all I'm trying to do here is find the right circle. And so we've got that one, we've got that one, and then I'll just put those to the side so that in case I do want to use a border there, I can do that. But for now, I'm just going to use these two dies. And again, this is a card base, so I will fold it over and then we'll die cut this out. So very easy to cut that out. You could do a lot of things here. Again, I'm going to use some design paper just because it's easy, but could have used some ink and done some ink blending on the inside you could also stamp on the inside of that card, but I am going today decide to use more pattern paper. And this is some butterfly pattern paper because I was determined to use these butterfly stickers that I had. I think they're absolutely gorgeous and I think they'll match really well here. It's a lot of pink, but I think it'll be fine. I decided I wanted to use an embossing folder for the outside of this card. Now the embossing folder will not go all the way to the edges, so we'll figure that out later on. There's always a way <laughs> to figure that out. So as you can see, there's uh, three quarters of an inch or so on the right and then a little bit on the top and we'll figure that out. All right, because this had so much pink on it, I decided to use a Distress Oxide that might not be so, so bold. And it's Tattered Rose. And you can either swipe like that. I wanted to just show you what that would look like. But I'm not so great at that. I get a little heavy handed. So I decided to use just a sponge jobber. And I'm just going around and lightly putting some color on these butterflies and flowers. And I thought 
because there was so much going on between the paper and these butterflies that I would have to use just this light ink, but I'll soon decide that it's just not enough. It's pretty and all, but it needs a little bit more than just the tattered rose, which is a very, very light kind of blush color. And I have this pretty well sped up just because it's it's just me trying to get color on each one of the flowers and the butterflies. Okay, and you can see here I'm kind of looking at it going, eh, not so impressed. So I decided to set it that aside for a second and I'm going to go to what do I want to do with this edge that just doesn't have any embossing on it. And I've got those two really pretty washi tapes and I'll I put those aside because I'm going to get back to this. So I decided to use some Seedless Preserves color Distress Oxide and I'm going to make some of the butterflies look a little bit more bold and I like that and then I'm also using Picked Raspberry which is another pretty pink color and I'm going to just color each of the flowers with that pretty pink and I'm just putting a little bit of ink down. It's going to be fairly busy and I could have very simply just left the embossing and let it be white and that would have looked just as pretty as well. And then here, this is like a lace washi tape. And I think it's really, really pretty. And I liked that even though the other washi tape matched those butterflies really well, I think this is gonna be a much better look. And then, so you're gonna see that on the inside of the card. And then I will trim off that half an inch to three quarters of an inch, whatever that is on the front there that didn't get embossed. And then I'm also trimming just a little bit of the top because that also didn't get embossed. And I'm able to use the edge of where that embossing folder went. And that looks really pretty. And so you never have to worry if your embossing folders are just not big enough. They're starting to make them much larger today, but I have so many that are a smaller size and I just always make it work. I can either do one side and then do another side or whatever. I decided to put a little bit of ink on the edge of that. It kind of made it a little bit more distinguished, stood out anyway. And then I decided where the embossing puller didn't hit on this other edge. I'm just gonna put a little bit of the same washi tape, but I'll have to trim that off. But then that'll coordinate really well and it'll have just that little bit. And then we'll, these are my sticky scissors. <laughs> They're my scissors that I try and keep them just for sticky stuff so that I am not having to constantly clean my nicer scissors which are my Tim Holtz. I have a Tim Holtz small set of scissors and a Tim Holtz long bladed scissors that I love, but I use those for mostly cutting paper. So here it is and it's pretty busy, but it's not too busy. I think I would have done just as well to keep that white on the outside. So just the embossing folder might've been pretty, or I could have maybe just put a little bit of gold glaze on there. So there's lots of different things you can do. You don't always have to add color, but you'll see today I sort of was in a coloring mood <laughs> and I colored a lot of these. So here again, I'm going to put something behind the two cutouts, but this time I'm going to put it on the inside of the card. And so that's what you'll see when you open up the card and you'll also see it from the front. So that's a nice look as well. I just wanted to show you what it would look like when you have it this way. You can also put some acetate in those circles if you wanted it to look more like a window, but I had a lot of shine with these butterflies. I decided to take out, these are how I keep my sentiments, and I want to call them sentiment strips, but some of them are just cut out sentiments that I have coordinate dies for, and then some I buy cut out, and then I just use press and seal, and I keep them like that. So I'm just going to pick out a couple of sentiments. As you guys know, I make a lot of birthday cards. It seems like I use more of those than anything. So I'm going to find a couple birthday sentiments that I like for inside of those circles. The press and seal is nice because I can see it all because it's clear. Uh, I also used a little bit of removable tape on some of those, but I like to be able to just pull out my sentiments and see what I have available to me. That's a fairly big sentiment for in there, but I think it'll work fine. And then I'm going to peel back the backing on these butterflies and place them down. I don't want to peel the whole backing off because I don't want it to be sticky, the part that's staying in the center of the circle. So I peeled off half of that butterfly sticker and then left it on the part that's going to be in the circle. 
and I'm going to do that for all of these butterflies. And I may have to trim some of the butterflies as well, and then I will tack down the sentiments using some foam tape to the inside of the card. I'm trying to make sure I'm getting that centered, so sorry my head keeps popping in there. And I used a whole bunch of little teeny tiny foam dots, and I cut some strips out and made it all work. I think that came out really pretty. It's a little bit busy, but it's very, very pretty, very feminine, and I think that'll be a pretty birthday card for someone, and I like how you open it up and those things are there. All right, on to the next cards. So I'm just going to cut an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock, and I'm gonna cut it long ways. So it's gonna be four and a quarter on each side. And this is gonna allow me to make a, like a tri-fold card. And so I'm here, I'm just going to find the center, and then I'm going to fold it over so that each side is symmetrical. I'm folding in one side and then folding in the other side, and they should fit really nicely and that bone folder will make sure that it is a nice seam. This is what we're going to start with as a card base and I'm going to pull out the cutouts that I cut out from the centers of those cards and we're going to have some fun with some stickers and I got these stickers from the dollar store and I was really impressed for a dollar that I got these. Actually I think they're more like a dollar twenty-five today but in either case very inexpensive stickers and they're 3D and I really really liked them and I thought that would help me speed this up a little bit by using some stickers instead of having to do more die cutting. So I'm pulling out some pattern paper and it's got some cute little birthday candles on it and then I'm just gonna, you know, I don't measure very often. I'm just gonna make a couple marks so that I can cut this down. And I don't assume that they're the same, but I do measure and cut out both of them. And so I'm gonna put a piece on either side of the two folding sides. And I'm using a tape runner for this. And so when that's closed, it'll look like all one sheet. I did have a very, very small border around it, but you can barely tell because it's white and the paper has white in it but those, it looks very continuous when you have it closed like that. So then I'm gonna use that one that I cut out and I also pulled out the next smaller size so I can use another piece of pattern paper and cut that out and then it'll kind of be a frame inside of a frame and that will be really pretty. And I'm gonna pop that up onto some foam tape just to give it a little bit of dimension. And then also the stickers will also give it a little dimension. And so those colors all coordinate. It came from the same pattern paper set. And I always include in the description box below all the items that I use that I can find. So I'm just putting glue on half of this because it's only gonna be glued down on the one side so that it can have the other side to close. And if you wanted this to close, you can tie some ribbon around it or you can put one of those Velcro closures on the other side. I never worry about that too much. It looks cute if you can stand it up and it stands out like this. I decided to use the candles because there's candles in that paper and then these are 3D candles. And I thought they were really pretty and super fun. And then this could be either a masculine or a feminine card. And you'll see later on when I make some colors on the insides that I make sure to keep it kind of neutral. And this happy birthday, which just happened to be there as well. It's a 3D sticker as well and it's got some really pretty glitter on it. So I just wasn't sure if the, the stickiness of the sticker was going to be enough. So I put a little bit of glue just to make sure that sentiment stays where I want it to stay, which is in the center of those candles. I think that came out really, really cute. All right, so now for the inside, I have a little bit of leftover paper from those candles. I decided I'm gonna cut it in half and then put a little bit on either side. And I just always like to have the inside of my card coordinate with the outside of my card and then before I mail it out I will also do the same for the envelopes. I usually make my own envelopes and therefore I'm able to either put some of that pattern paper on the envelope like in the inside flap or I will take some of these candles and cut a couple of them out and put it on the front of the envelope whatever <laughs> suits my mood at that time but I thought this would look really cute. We'll just trim off the edges here and that would make a really really pretty card. I'm looking at it looking at it. <laughs> All right so now I'm going to cheat here and I'm going to fold the next one the same way. I decided to do two of the cards with trifold. I love the little trifold idea and I used this for my Christmas card last year and it just is it's unique the way it opens and I just really enjoy that. So all right here's my two little pieces that were left out from the second card we made and I'm trying to decide I think I'm going to still use those same stickers 
and we're going to double those two up but first I want to give it a little bit of color. So I'm using Crushed Curry, it's a Stampin' Up stamp pad and I'm just using a foam dauber and I'm just going to get some ink down there. I'm using the top of the foam dauber uh, so that I don't get ink all over my fingers or fingerprints in the ink. And since this is the outer one I'm mostly concerned about the outer layer of that. And then the second one I'm using is Petunia Pop. It's a pink color and that will be on the inside circle. And using that same cap there to help me out so I don't get ink all over my fingers. This is not an ink I use a lot for blending, but it's a very bright, bold ink. I love the Stamp It Up ink pads. They're great for getting just a little bit of color down. I am going to put some stickers on there so they didn't have to be perfectly blended or anything like that. Okay, so I used an embossing folder on either side of this, and they have balloons. And then, like I did the, the other one, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the one side of this circle, and that will be how you open the card. I'm trying to eyeball it and make sure it's centered. I do turn it over and realize that the glue is kind of sticking out, but that looks pretty centered to me. And then we'll put that pink in the center there. And I could have off-centered it. You could do a lot of different things. This could be any shape. I just wanted to use up what I used from when I cut out from those other first two cards we made. I really like this sticker, so I decided to go with this. It's got a couple balloons and it's 3D. It's very, very cute. Because there was some ink there on the inside of that, I wanted to make that look nice so that when you open the card, it doesn't look bad. So this is a piece of scrap paper I used from another project. I'm gonna glue that down and then I'll just cut it out. And that way it'll just have a more finished look on the inside of the card. That is something I usually like to do. And if there's any kind of messiness or if it doesn't match, then I always try and make that look a little bit more finished. So I'm trying to decide do I want to put some ink on the outside and I really think in the end I should have left this alone because I think that was enough. I decide to grab my markers and I'm going to color in all the balloons on the front of these two flaps and I have this very very fast forwarded so it almost looks like the ink is kind of <laughs> getting on there itself but I just wanted to give you a general idea and I'm going to cut a lot of this out as well because I just you guys get the point I'm just putting some ink down I'm not doing a ton of blending these are tri-blend markers so there's three of the same shade of markers there's a light a medium and a darker version of each color and I love these markers for that because if I do need to do some shading it gives me more options. It just gives me a lot more colors. So you can see there I've got different shades of similar colors and things along those lines. I am using a silver pen to make all the little balloon strings pop out a little bit. And then this is where I'm like, ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> and then when you open it up on the other side, you almost need to color them in on the inside as well because it just doesn't look finished enough. So I color the inside and the outside. So this card took a little bit longer because of that. And you'll see that I cut out a bunch of this and just wanted to give you the general idea. And then I'm going to color in the strings again with the silver pen. And a pretty busy card. I decided to put a sentiment on the inside of the card. And this just says, hooray, it's your birthday. I'm using some markers to make it look like it has a little bit of a border. Again, I'm going to use some fairly benign colors so that I can make this a masculine, feminine, whatever kind of card. It could be for a kid. It could be for an adult. It's a pretty versatile card. And then I decided just to put some glue on there. And I'll get that centered. But that way, that's in the center. I didn't want to really put a sentiment strip, I didn't think, on the outside. But then I pulled out my sentiments anyway to see if maybe I could just put a little teeny tiny sentiment strip in there. And I did decide to go with that. I played around with that for a little while, but left it there in the center and glued that down. All right, so I just wanted to show you all the finishing touches here. I'll start with the first two cards. So I've got this gold card that we did the cutout and then I attached the paper to the front of the card front and then added those die cuts. And I think that came out really, really pretty. I like just the one color of that card. And then I took the cutout from the center of that and made this next card. And we just used some dollar store stickers and some patterned paper. And that is a really cute card as well. I like how everything coordinates pretty nicely there. And then the second card we made, we used two circles and I cut those out 
and then we put the pattern paper on the back side of the card base and then put a couple sentiments in there so you can see them from the inside and put a bunch of really sparkly butterflies on the front as well. And then this last one, we use those two circles, created a trifold card again, and it's pretty busy, but I really think it came out cute. And I ended up putting a piece of paper on the back as a border paper. And you'll see that just here in a second. I have a picture of that as well. So I had a lot of fun with these. I was glad I was able to use up all the different scraps. And I think this was a super fun project and a great way to use our nesting dies. So here you can see I put some blue paper on the back of that one card and some green paper on the other card. Thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate it so much. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.